Hey, what's up, guys? So, um, first of all, I want to say happy Valentine's Day to you all. Hope you guys are having a great day today. So, sending love to everyone. Um, second of all, um, I want to thank you all for all the millions of comments that I've seen from my last video that I made regarding um, Cheryl Swoop saying that um, Caitlin, Clark, Caitlin Clark and Adrian Reese weren't going to dominate. That was the last video I made. So this is my new video I'm making now. So I had so many comments. Those are the most comments I received. I never thought I was going to get that many comments. So um, just want to thank you all for um, just voicing your opinion or just saying what you have to say, whether I disagree with it or not. I just love to hear the comments. So I was good to see both the good and the bad, so I want to thank you all for that. You know, thank you for voicing your opinion. You know, you're free to say what you need to say. We all have a voice, and we have the right to use it. So the last video I made was when Cheryl Swoops, you know, there was a clip that I saw. So the clip that I watched, because I know when people were commenting, they mentioned um about how Cheryl Swoops um said that Caitlin Clark was old and um Cheryl Swoops said something around like she's 25 playing with the youngest in college so when I made that video regarding Cheryl Swoops um saying that Caitlin was not going to dominate the WNBA um it's going to take some time and she said um some similar about Andrew Reese I only watched that clip. Now, the other clip that you guys are mentioning, and I do know what you guys are saying, I saw the clip after I saw the clip based on her saying that the two girls weren't going to dominate. I saw that, set, you know, it was different clips because um, I saw the clip, I saw the different clips on Twitter. That's when, um, that's where I saw the videos. And they um, had the separate clips of her saying one thing about them not dominating. And then um, there was another clip of her saying that she's 25 years old playing with the youngest. That was the second clip. So I didn't talk about that second clip because I only um, discussed from the first clip that I saw. But um, yeah, I did watch the second clip and I did see where... You know, she was saying some false things about Caitlyn. Like, she talked more about Caitlyn than Angel Reese to me. So, for her to, you know, I thought Cheryl Soups was wrong. And I do agree with the people that did um, comment about Cheryl Swoops saying that she was 25 years old playing with the youngins. I did agree with you guys commenting on that. And Cheryl Swoops was wrong with that because... She lost her mind when she said that. First of all, if Caitlin was 25 right now, she would have been already in the WNBA. So let's state the facts right now. Caitlin is 22. She just turned 22. She's a senior at Iowa. Um, third of all, I mean, she has the choice to either um, enter the draft this year for the WNBA if she wants to, or she could use her COVID year. So she has that choice. And then she's eight points shy of passing Kelsey Plum in points. Now, the last game she played, I guess they expected her to achieve that goal, but she didn't achieve it. But she will because she's only eight points shy. So um, we already know the next game she's going to go over eight points and pass Kelsey Plum. Yeah, so it's just a whole big mess. Like, it was just so many comments. I was glad to see a lot of comments. So it's like people really took that seriously of what Cheryl said. And then another thing I saw like on other social media sites like Twitter and um, I'm sure Instagram as well, but I did see it on Twitter where there were shirts made say, saying, be a, don't be a Cheryl. And then there was another um, video I saw where um, it showed Cheryl's accomplishments where she made, she had four WBA championships, which is true because I, was watching WNBA when it first came out. Those were the good days, like in the beginning, the Lisa Leslie era, 
you know, Lisa, um, Cynthia Cooper, you know, Cheryl Swoop. So I, I was watching them and they played really good. I'm going to admit that they were good in the comments. They was always known as a team to try to beat. Like they, they, they were a tough team, the comments. And um, they were saying Cheryl won four national championships. She um, did like so many years of being an all-star, you know, all these WNBA accomplishments. So I'm like, okay, you know, good for her and all, but why are you comparing her, you know, to Caitlin? How are you comparing Cheryl Swoop's accomplishments to Caitlin? Caitlin is not even in the WNBA yet. Because that's like saying, oh, Cheryl is so much better than Caitlyn. So Cheryl has the right to say, yeah, Cheryl has a right to say what she want to say. But Cheryl has to get her facts straight and know, you know, um, how to say things when it's right and don't say things that's wrong. It's okay. You know, if you want to talk about somebody, get the facts. And what Cheryl did, she didn't get the facts. She just came out and said this and that just assuming and just just lied on how you know on Caitlyn's age and I'm like did she even look up this girl like did anybody tell her she was 25 like where is she getting this from what was in her right mind to even say that I mean I have no problem with Cheryl Swoops but I'm just wondering why would why did she even think that she was 25 playing in college because you know when you're a journalist that's even like when you watch talk shows, when you see like Jennifer Hudson or, you know, when Oprah used to have her show and they interview people in general. That's when anybody that had a talk show, when you have people coming on your show, you have to do your background on them first before you even talk about them. Because I'm just not going to get on the show talking about somebody and um, just throwing lies. I don't know nothing about that person. I'm going to do my research first before I get on there talking about somebody. So, um, yeah, it's just a whole mess with this thing with Cheryl Swoops. It just blew up. I never thought it was going to be this big of a deal, you know, with Cheryl Swoops saying this and that or talking about Caitlyn. But it seemed like people made more of a big deal of Cheryl talking about Caitlyn than Angel Reese. I mean, you know, we all know that Caitlyn is going to be okay when she go to the WNBA. And I said what I have to say about Angel Reese. I basically said she may not dominate the WNBA. That's just my opinion. She's gonna have she has a lot of work to do. It's gonna be like a new learning experience for her in the WNBA. So she's probably gonna um gonna go through a, you know some adjustments in the WNBA. Cause there's a lot of girls that play like her in the WNBA. Cause the WNBA, I mean, it's a lot of competition right now. And then you have old players that are returning this year. So it's a lot of competition. And then you have people, um, a lot of trades. And then you have some coming in where they're going to start with the training camp. So you never know what's going to happen. They start with the training camp and they just have to bring their A game. They get cut or they possibly won't get cut. And another thing I want to talk about, I think... Um, Cheryl Swoops didn't know much about Caitlyn because she probably was hearing like all over the sports channels about maybe she was hearing about her passing Kelsey Plumman points and she probably was like oh well who's this girl that's scoring 30 50 something points a game or 40 something points a game that probably would drew Cheryl's attention because that's all, you know, they talk about Caitlyn on the sports networks a lot, like ESPN. And at times they always mention, you know, how many points she makes. So that probably drew Cheryl's attention. Like, who's this girl making 30 or 40 or 50 some points every night? Because, you know, when Cheryl Swoop, you know, when Cheryl Swoop's played, I mean, I'm pretty sure she wasn't, I mean, she scored points and she was good in college, but she probably wasn't making those high points like that in college like Caitlyn so that probably would drew her attention as well because she was all over the sports network so you know you just have to you know do your research on people and um I also want to talk about Paige Beckers because I know she um 
her and UConn, they played against South Carolina on Sunday. And, um, you know, you guys feel free to drop your comments below. Now, I know for sure Paige Beckers <laughs> is not going to be the number one draft pick. What I didn't like was that when she played against South Carolina, was that she wasn't taking the shots like she was supposed to make. I'm sorry, with, like she wasn't taking the shots that she was supposed to take because she kept getting the ball and then passing. I'm like, Paige, you have to be selfish and shoot that ball because there was a lot of um, times where she should have been shooting and scoring and she wasn't shooting. So I don't know if she lost her confidence, but it just seemed like she's not playing the same like she was when she was a freshman. She was a freshman. She was the main one getting talked about at the time when Caitlin was again talked about. And I don't know what happened to Paige, but Paige needs to get it together because she was passing, like, you know, kept passing it and not shooting it, you know. And you, the difference is with Caitlin, when Caitlin get the ball, Caitlin's going to shoot. With Paige Beckers, Paige Beckers was not shooting the ball. She kept passing it. And Paige was not taking a lot of shots. I think that was the problem, too. And I'm not trying to say Paige is responsible, like 100% responsible of the team losing. I just know that's not the way she normally plays. And I just need Paige to get back to just taking her shots like she need to and not holding back. Because I know she could score those points. But Caitlin, went, Caitlin would have been shooting. And, and Paige... I don't know, Paige just needs to get back to where she needs to be. Like, I'm rooting for you kind of get back together. I mean, get it together because they have a lot of injuries on their team. Like, a lot of good players, they're sitting on the bench injured. So, I'm kind of rooting for you kind to get it back. Maybe, you know, it may be a miracle. They still have time because it's not to the point where they're playing for the tournament, even though they have a few losses, maybe four or five losses. But they still have time. And um, I'm rooting for South Carolina. I do want South Carolina to win the championship this year. But you just never know. I mean, they're undefeated right now. They haven't lost a game. But you just never know. Because look what happened um, last year. They were undefeated the whole season. And then when it came to the Final Four, Iowa came and whooped their butt. <laughs> so anything, is, anything can happen. Anything is possible. So... Just because South Carolina is undefeated, that don't mean they're going to win the championship. You would hope. Because I would like for South Carolina to win the championship. But you just never know. Because the Final Four, it will surprise you. The Final Four will always surprise you. So you just never know. But South Carolina, they look like they um, they ended to um, take the trophy this year. But you just... You just got to um, keep watching to see. All right. So, um, again, drop your comments below. If you have anything else to add on to the Cheryl and Caitlin situation, um, add on to it. And another thing I want to discuss is that, you know, I did see some people comment saying Cheryl may be jealous. Cheryl doesn't like Caitlin. You know, just different um, comments about Cheryl Swoops. And I also heard that, you know, she was coaching at Loyola Marymount University and she was rude and disrespectful to the players. You know, I heard like different things about her or whatever. And I know back at the time, like when she played in college and, you know, she was again the NIL deals. She may be jealous, who knows? But she see that these college players right now, they're getting NIL deals, they're getting endorsements, they're getting money. It's a different time now. And they're probably getting shoes made, like their own shoe. Because I thought um, one of the college players, it could be Juju Watkins or, or Kiki Rice, one of the two. Um, I believe someone created a shoe for them. But that's another thing. They're getting their own shoes now in college, some of them. I think it was one of the girls, Juju or Kiki Rice. It could be Kiki Rice. I think um, showed a picture of her shoe somebody created for her. But it's a lot of things coming for these college players. And back at the time, you know, when Lisa Leslie, Cynthia Cooper, Cheryl Swoops, 
and Cheryl Miller and, you know, a few others. The McGee twins, you know, back at the time, they wasn't getting NIL deals. They wasn't getting no type of <laughs> endorsements. They wasn't getting no money. They was just college. They were good. Don't get me wrong. They were like very good players. But during their time, they wasn't getting paid. They weren't doing these commercials. You know, like right now, you got um, women b-ball players um, making commercials and stuff now. Back then, no girls wasn't doing commercials like that. They wasn't getting money. And then right now, they're looking like, wow, we should have got money back then. Why are they giving it to these college players now? So Cheryl may be feeling some type of way based on when she played at the time, she wasn't getting those offers. So it, it's a possibility there is some jealousy. I don't know. We don't know, but it is what it is. I mean, times have changed. This is a new time. You know, uh, women's basketball is just going to grow and grow and grow each year, every day. It's just a growing moment. So, I mean, there's more in store. You never know what's going to happen this year, next year. You know, um, the future is just, the future is on its way. So you just have to keep a lookout, you know, what's in store. Because we have all this technology out now and people creating things. And yes, yeah, a lot of um, smart people out there that will um, create something for b-ball players. So it's like different. Because back at the time, you know, 80s, 70s, we wasn't doing all this technology. You know, we didn't have the cell phones. <laughs> we don't have the iPads and all that back then. You know, back in the day, we had like... You know, some people had pagers, and then when you talk on the phone, you're using your house phone. I mean, you guys know how that was back then. <laughs> I mean, I don't have to tell you. You guys know pretty much. All right, so I'm going to end it from there, talking about Cheryl Swoops. Um, continue dropping your comments below. Um, I know this is not about sports, but um, did you guys... Um, order Beyonce singles. I believe she's trying to turn into a country artist now. And so I did hear that it's a possibility that Beyonce may be jealous of Taylor Swift. Or could she be jealous? Because we all know Taylor Swift is a country artist. And she see Taylor Swift getting her attention. Do you think that's the reason why she started doing country music because she's she see that Taylor Swift is getting all this attention on TV. I mean, Taylor Swift is everywhere on TV. I mean, you see she's dating a guy, uh, what's his name, Travis Kelsey or whatever. And then all of a sudden, Beyonce comes out with two singles that's supposed to be like, you know, have that country vibe to it. I mean, do you agree or disagree? I mean, Beyonce are right now, but to me, I feel like she's, I just feel like she um, is feeling some type of way because Taylor Swift is getting all this attention. And so <clears throat> she wants to um, do a country album to get the country fans, to get money from the country fans. So what do you think of all this? Because I never, you know, thought Beyonce would, you know, try to get some country music out, you know, you know, make out, you know, make songs that are, that is country, which is nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, I've, you know, anybody could, um, everybody has the right to sing country music. I like country music. I like, you know, all types of music. I listen to everything. But to me, I just think with Beyonce um, coming out with two country music singles, <laughs> I think it's, she's feeling some type of way because of Taylor Swift getting all this media attention. That's just how I see it. 
All right, so um, go ahead and drop your comments below. You guys have a great night.